Okay. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is doing really good. Okay, guys. Today's class is a continuation of yesterday's class. In yesterday's class, we have started with the general pathology, and in general pathology, the first chapter which we have just taken is the cellular injury. The first part of cellular injury we have discussed: reversible cellular injury, irreversible cellular injury. And what are the changes which you will see in reversible as well as irreversible cell? After irreversible cellular injury, we have discussed the topic of cell death. The how actually cell death happens. The two main important forms of cell death one is the necrosis as well as the apoptosis. And how necrosis happens and how apoptosis happens and what are the pathways of ap uh, apoptosis? The intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway, and how caspases helps in apoptosis. In yesterday's class, we have discussed all these things. Those who ever didn't watch the yesterday's class, please go and watch that class before. Thing this class okay now in yesterday's class we have discussed necrosis as well as apoptosis but what i have said you is there are some other types of cell death when a cell have undergone irreversible cell injury beyond repair what will happen cell death will happen for sure now the major two forms of cell death is necrosis which is absolutely pathological we have discussed right necrosis is always always pathological and apoptosis is a programmed cell death okay it uses atp and there is a certain program. This is how a cell death should happen. There is a blueprint in apoptosis. Apart from this necrosis and apoptosis, we have some other types of cell deaths, which, which are like a, a necroptosis as well as pyroptosis. That's what we will discuss in this today's class. But before that, I just want to ask you a few important questions, whether I, I, I want to see whether you could remember them or not. Just tell me, what is the death receptor? Okay, what is the death receptor? Guys, could you be able to recollect? What is the CD marker of the death receptor? Is it CD55, CD59, is it something else? CD95, anyone? Guys, I am seeing the chart. What is the death receptor, sir? In apoptosis, the death receptor is? Some students are asking. Like uh, there is a buff, some buffering going on. Okay, guys, if you have any like buffering issues, just try to um, refresh your page. From our end, I think everything is good. Okay, CD95, excellent, guys. CD95 is the death receptor. CD95 is the death receptor. Now, what is the caspase, the executionary caspase? The last and final important caspase, which will activate the proteases and endonucleases. Executionary caspase is CD3. Okay, CD3 is the main important executionary caspase. Now, which type of necrosis will happen in peripancreatic fat? In peripancreatic fat, which type of necrosis will happen? Is it coagulative necrosis or is it liquefactive necrosis? No, sir. It's not the coagulative necrosis or liquefactive necrosis. It is fat necrosis. In peripancreatic fat, fat necrosis will happen. What type of necrosis will happen in omentum? If you have any trauma to omentum, what type of necrosis will happen? In omental injury, fat necrosis will happen. What type of necrosis will happen in histoplasmosis? Okay, if you have infection of your lungs, histoplasma infection in your lungs, what type of necrosis will happen in your lungs? What, what is the type of necrosis that will happen if you have histoplasma infection to your lungs? The fungal infection. Anyone? It's the necrosis, the death of the cells will look like something, a cheesy appearance, cheesy like cottage, a cottage cheese appearance. What is that? Caseous necrosis. In yesterday's class, we have discussed caseous necrosis is going to happen uh, in uh, mycobacterium TB infections, uh, histoplasma infections, and so on. Okay. Now, um, what is the marker of apoptosis? Okay. If you want to know which cells are undergoing apoptosis, now you have to put a dye. You have to put a dye. What is the marker of apoptosis? It starts with the letter A. NX in 5. NX in 5. Okay. NX in 5 is the marker of apoptosis. Okay, NX in 5 is a marker of apoptosis. Now, if you do gel electrophoresis study, okay, if you do gel electrophoresis study, apoptosis will show what kind of pattern. Okay, the DNA will arrange in what kind of pattern in gel electrophoresis. This stepladder pattern, excellent. See, this uh, stepladder pattern is going to be only seen in apoptosis. No, don't, don't never ever forget the stepladder pattern is seen in apoptosis, no doubt, but it can also be seen even in the cells which have undergone necrosis. Okay, the stepladder pattern is something seen in both apoptosis as well as necrosis, but if you want to answer one single point, it is apoptosis. But in the options, in the option is something like both, seen in both necrosis as well as apoptosis, go for the op option both. It, will, it is seen in both apoptosis as well as necrosis. Okay, now after that, 
try to answer this question what is the type of what is the type of uh, morphological cell change okay or just try to answer it what is the most hallmark change that is seen okay the hallmark change seen with irreversible cell injury irreversible cell injury when the cell have undergone irreversible cell injury we know whenever the cell membranes are damaged and when the mitochondria are damaged beyond repair well, definitely cell is going to go for the irreversible cell injury now in irreversible cell injury there is this pathognomic change what is that there is this pathognomic change what is that large amorphous flocculent densities inside the mitochondria yes excellent okay it's a large amorphous flocculent densities inside the mitochondria which is nothing but the calcium accumulation inside the mitochondria is a pathognomic okay that's a very very important now after this okay without any further due let's start our today's class okay now before that i just want to i just want you to uh, take this one more point so this uh, step ladder pattern and like you know step ladder pattern which is seen in the gel electrophoresis and smear pattern actually we have discussed but there is something which i want you to know there is a stain called as tunnel stain okay tunnel stain it's also a type of staining okay so this tunnel stain it is positive in which type of cell death and it is negative in which type of cell death That's what i want you to know so tunnel stain is positive okay this stain see an exin 5 stain is going to be taken by those cells which are undergoing apoptosis okay when a cell is undergoing apoptosis it will take an exin 5 stain right in the same way there is a stain called as a tunnel stain now this tunnel stain will be positive it, the stain will come positive if the cells are undergoing apoptosis apoptosis it's a positive apoptosis positive okay so tunnel stain will be positive in apoptosis and the tunnel stain will be negative in exactly the opposite the necrosis okay necro this necrosis necrosis negative okay so important point which was asked in the previous exams necrosis tunnel stain is negative apoptosis tunnel stain is positive now without any further delay let's start our today's class guys the other type of cell death which i want you to know is necroptosis okay necroptosis now what exactly is this necroptosis okay now the, if you want to know it in a one single definition it is programmed necrosis programmed necrosis the programmed necrosis sir. see usually the definition like uh, here you will get uh, some kind of confusion so the programmed cell death is apoptosis okay programmed cell death is apoptosis not the necrosis but what is the specialty of necroptosis actually necroptosis is a combination of both necrosis you will see features of both necrosis as well as a pop apoptosis apoptosis both events of necrosis and apoptosis are there okay now what are the important mcqs which you want to know so this is programmed cell death right so something like apoptosis but usually in apoptosis caspases are involved okay caspases initiator caspases and executionary caspases are activated those caspases will activate the endonucleases you know the entire story the cell death will happen for sure but here see it's a programmed necrosis it's a programmed cell death no doubt but here important point is caspases are not involved it is caspase independent okay so repeatedly repeatedly ask mcq necroptosis is caspase independent cell death caspase independent okay it's a caspase independent cell death absolutely active no doubt it is absolutely an active process okay, it's not a passive process it is also program right so if it is a program definitely it is active okay the caspases are not involved this is very very important repeatedly ask mcq now in necroptosis the kind of questions that will come to you is sir where we can see this necroptosis necroptosis is a uh, is a type of cell death right which cells are undergoing necroptosis the necroptosis is also physiological as well as pathological it's also both it's also both physiological as well as pathological okay physiological as well as pathological now see what is the physiological example of 
necroposis in our body which cells are undergoing necroposis direct questions okay so as a doctor to clear the exams you should know this simple no, no need to go through the entire thing we are not going to be a pathologist simple thing you need to know for your exams here. sir which cells in our body are undergoing necroposis the during growth plate formation during in our bones we all know there is something called as a growth plate during growth plate formation growth plate formation in our bones okay the certain cells will undergo necroposis certain cells will undergo necroposis and what are the pathological examples at least one thing which you should know is pancreatitis in pancreatitis okay in pancreatitis and in fatty liver these are pathological right fatty liver now you will get it out so in yesterday's class we have discussed whenever there is acute pancreatitis acute pancreatitis there will be liquefactive necrosis liquefactive necrosis and peripancreatic fat will undergo fat necrosis with a chalky white deposition see here certain cells like you know there are millions and millions of cells most of the cells are undergoing liquefactive necrosis too but certain amount of cells will also undergo this necroposis okay so in acute pancreatitis fatty liver as well as uh, cells which are infected with the cytomegalovirus mcq cytomegalovirus and if a patient is having parkinsonism parkinsonism the neurons will also undergo necroposis at least what i want you to know here is in theta hepatitis fatty liver okay pancreatitis especially the cytomegaloviral infections okay, in cytomegaloviral infections cells if uh, cells are undergoing uh, infection with this virus the cells will undergo necroposis guys at the end of the day if someone comes to and ask you what is caspase independent caspase independent cell death is is necroposis caspase independent programmed cell death caspase independent programmed cell death that is necroposis and it's a active process now here i just want to show you the pathway how necroposis exactly happens you know the pathway of apoptosis okay you know the pathway of apoptosis intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway once intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway are completed the initiator caspases will activate the executory caspases now see here for example this is a cell okay this is a cell which is undergoing necroposis necroposis means it's a programmed cell there is a program there is there is a blueprint a sequence of events should happen okay it's not like a murder someone is coming from outside and killing there is a sequence of events should happen so what happens sir see the first stimulus is coming in the form of tumor necrosis factor okay tumor necrosis factor is a ligand it's a ligand okay now this tumor necrosis factor is coming to a particular cell now this is a cell which is undergoing necroposis it's going to die now this tumor necrosis factor is coming like this now this tumor necrosis factor will go and bind here okay so tumor necrosis factor is going to bind with its tumor necrosis factor receptor simple when the tumor necrosis factor receptor is activated it give a signal into the cell that the rip kinases the rip kinases in the cell mcq the rip kinase rip kinase 1 and rip kinase 3 okay rip kinases 1 and rip kinase 3 very very important are activated now this rip kinases are going to activate something called as mlkl okay i just i just remember like mlk milk l okay mlk means milk i just remember like milk l okay so milk l or mlkl inside the cell see all these are the substances which are present inside the cell okay now this once this mlkl is activated or phosphorylated now this rip kinases the name itself it is a rip kinase kinase means kinase means it will do phosphorylation normally inside the cell mlkl is inactive mlkl is inactive okay you don't need to know what exactly is mlkl okay no one will ask you what exactly is mlkl now rip kinases will do phosphorylation of this mlkl okay now once mlkl is activated now this will go and destroy the cell membrane it will destroy the cell so necroposis will happen okay so why we are calling it as a program cell death why because there is sequence of events are happening what are the sequence of events the ligand the first stimulus is coming in the form of a tumor necrosis factor tumor necrosis factor binds to its receptor whenever the tumor necrosis factor is binding with its receptor activates a cascade of events in the cell which will ultimately activate the rip kinases rip kinase 1 and rip kinase 3 now rip kinase 1 and 3 will activate the uh, will uh, will do phosphorylation of mlkl that will cause the necroposis so direct question mlkl is involved in which type of cell death necroposis rip kinases are involved in which type of cell death necroposis 
TNF receptors and TNF ligand is involved in which type of signal? Apoptosis. Simple. Is there is any caspase involved here? There is no need of any caspases. Actually, here procaspases are also involved. Procaspases. Procaspases are involved, but they are procaspases, not the active caspases. Even certain procaspases are involved. Okay. Procaspase number 8 is involved, but actual real caspases, the active caspases are not taking place in the um, events of necroptosis. Okay. So, this is what I want you to know. This is what I want you to know regarding the necroptosis. Okay. Is it clear, guys? Now, you, you can ask me, sir, why we are actually calling it as a necroptosis? Why don't we simply call it as apoptosis? Because two things. Here, the caspases are not involved. So, this is not exactly the apoptosis. But it is programmed. But why we are calling it as a necroptosis? There are certain events which will happen in necrosis will happen now here. Cell is dying. But at the end, at the end, what do you have? At the end, you will have inflammation. Inflammation. The inflammation is going to be present. Sir, inflammation is present. But very, very important remember, usually necrosis, inflammation is there. In, in necrosis type of cell deaths, inflammation will be there. In apoptosis, usually inflammation is absent. But here, morphologically, you can actually see the inflammation. So, inflammation is present, right? So, that is the reason why we are putting the name necroptosis. Okay, necroptosis. Why? Because inflammation is seen after the cell death. Okay. Now, after this, the second type of cell death, what is the next type of cell death which we have to discuss? That is, Pyroptosis. Pyroptosis. Now, what exactly is this pyroptosis? Okay, what exactly is this pyroptosis? Very simple. In the name itself, itself is there something called as pyro. Pyro means thing which increases the temperature in the body. Pyrogen, something like. That. Okay, pyrogen. So, what is pyrogen which will cause the fever? Okay, now what exactly happens in the pyroptosis? Here it sounds something like apoptosis. So definitely there is cell death is there. Cell is dying. Okay, cell is dying. Okay, cell is dying. Now after cell death, you are ending up with fever. Okay, so pyroptosis means cell death follows the fever. Okay, now here important MCQs which I want you to know is so in pyroptosis, the entire reaction is not needed. Entire reaction, usually the pyroptosis is seen whenever your cells are infected with the infe uh, infectious agents. Okay. Now, whenever a cell is undergoing pyroptosis, at the end what happens? See here, the caspases, okay, caspases, especially the number is important, guys. Uh, 1, 4, uh, 5, and 11. 1, 4, 5, 11. Very, very important. This is the MCQ. Okay. 1, 4, 5 and 11 in pyroptosis pathway, these caspases are activated inside the cell. Now, what these caspases will do, sir, especially the caspase number 1, it will convert, it will convert the inactive interleukin 1, interleukin, the pro interleukin 1, okay, pro, pro means it's inactive, inactive interleukin 1 will be converted into active interleukin 1, okay, into the active form. Now, we all know interleukin 1 is the one which causes fever. Okay, interleukin 1 is nothing but a pyrogen. So, in your exam, okay, what you should know? Pyroptosis ends with fever. In pyroptosis pathway, okay, in pyroptosis pathway, which caspases are activated? Caspase number 1, 4, 5 and 11. Which interleukins are produced? Interleukin 1, okay, pro-interleukin 1 will be converted into active interleukin. Now, what this interleukin 1 will do? So, this interleukin 1 will cause the fever in the body. Okay. So, with this, we have also completed with the pyroptosis. So, necroptosis important points, pyroptosis important points. Yeah. Now, if you say okay, we will continue with the next topic of today's class. Guys, is it clear? Shall I continue with the next topic? Our next topic for today's class is auto. Phagy. Shall I continue, guys? Shall I continue with autophagy? Okay. 
Okay. Now, see what exactly is auto? Auto means self. Okay, phagy means eating. So, autophagy means self eating. Okay, self eating. Now, how to understand this autophagy? Sir? Very simple. For example, try to understand you are going through old age. Old age. Now, there is this one cell which have a millions and like you know, which have lots and lots of mitochondria. There are lots and lots of mitochondria there. For example, right now, a mitochondria is produced. Now, this mitochondria after certain days, it will become old, right? So, a mitochondria is becoming old. Now, what should happen to this old mitochondria? It's no longer able to be like you know, normally participating in the oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, it's becoming old. The, the machinery, the, enzyme, the enzymatic machinery is not able to uh, function properly. Now, what should happen to this mitochondria? What we have to do this mitochondria? Now, think. Now, we have to digest away this mitochondria. Okay. And we have to take out all the uh, like amino acids and like, you know, what all the important substances released. We have to use them, proteins, whatever. Okay. And for example, let's take, let me take you other example. The other example here is severe malnutrition. Malnutrition. Okay, severe malnutrition. The patient is not eating for days. Now, I am not eating anything, for example, for 5 days, 10 days. Now, what will happen? I have to get the energy, right? I have to get the energy by somehow. So, do you know what will happen? All the mitochondria, all the cell organelles which are present in the cell. All that cell organelles will be digested away. For example, the endoplasmic reticulum in my cell, the ribosomes in my cell, the mitochondria in my cell will be digested with the help of lysosomes. So, the lysosomes in my own cells will go, will digest the mitochondria, digest the endoplasmic reticulum, digest the ribosomes. So, that after digestion, like after digesting these substances, these cell organelles, proteins will be released, right? Now, those proteins, by using those proteins, gluconeogenesis will happen. By utilizing the proteins, even uh, proteins will give you energy. Okay. So, by breaking down these proteins, you can actually generate the energy. So, that's how my body tries to survive in severe malnutrition. Okay. In severe malnutrition. So, I have given you two examples when autophagy will happen. Usually, when your cell organelles are becoming older and older. Now, those older cell organelles should have to be digested away with the help of autophagy and whenever you are undergoing severe malnutrition okay now how many types of autophagy are there important there are types which you should know for your exam first second third and fourth one is macro autophagy very simple micro autophagy Okay, next mitophagy. If you have any doubt in between, you can all the time ask. Okay, chaperon mediated autophagy. Okay, self destruction. Autophagy means self destruction. Now, see, first let's start with the macro autophagy, micro autophagy, and chaperon mediated autophagy. These are the main three things. Let me show you an image so that it will be clear for you. First, let's talk about the macro autophagy. Okay, macro autophagy. What are the events which are happening in the macro autophagy? First of all, what is the organelle which is mainly mediating this autophagy process? The organelle involved is nothing but the lysosome. So, lysosomes are involved. Lysosomes. Now, I have explained to you. What exactly happens in autophagy? Self-destruction. Our own organelles will be digested away, which will give us the energy. See, in macro autophagy, okay, see here, these substances like mitochondria, ribosomes, all the substances, okay, all the substances, okay, they are going to be surrounded. All the substances, they are going to be surrounded in the form of a vesicle, okay. A vesicle is going to completely encompass all these organelles, old organelles, are the cell organelles. Now, this forms a structure called as autophagosome. Autophagosome is going to be formed. Now, this autophagosome will be uptaken into the lysosome. Okay. So, 
Direct question. Autophagosome is formed in which type of autophagy? Macroautophagy, microautophagy, chevron mediated autophagy or mitophagy? In macroautophagy. Okay. In macroautophagy, autophagosome is produced. Okay. And this macro uh, auto, autophagosome is going to be uptaken into the lysosome. And all the C, all the substances are getting broken down with the help of hydrolytic enzymes. Done. Okay. Now, this is what happens in macroautophagy. Now, let's concentrate on microautophagy. Okay. Microautophagy. What exactly happens in microautophagy, sir? Direct C. There is no formation of autophagosome. There is no formation of autophagosome. Okay, autophagosome is not being formed. Here the lysosome, okay, here the lysosome is directly taking up the molecules, okay, the ribosomes, mitochondria, yeah, especially whatever the cell organelles are there. Now these cell organelles are directly uptaken into the lysosome and inside the lysosome those substances are being broken down, okay. So that is what happens in the microautophagy. In microautophagy there is direct uptake, no formation of phagoautosome. Okay, sorry, autophagy. Now, the last fellow, last type of autophagy is chaperon mediated autophagy. Means autophagy is happening, okay, mediated by substances called as chaperons. Okay, see here, chaperon is there, chaperons. Chaperons are the proteins. Um, here, very, very important, especially for the exam point of view, there are substances called as chaperons. Okay, chaperons. Now these chaperons are also called as heat shock proteins. The okay, heat shock proteins. Please 70. HSP 70. Heat shock proteins. Now what is the function of these chaperons? Normally chaperons, normal physiologically, let me tell you. Chaperons are something which will help in folding of proteins. Normally proteins are formed where? So proteins are formed from the ribosomes. See, ribosomes are forming the proteins. Okay, rough endoplasmic reticulum. I should say something like this. So there is something called as rough endoplasmic reticulum so this is the endoplasmic reticulum on which you are having all these granules which are nothing but the ribosomes these are the ribosomes this is the endoplasmic reticulum now where do the proteins are going to form proteins are forming in the ribosomes now these proteins need to be properly folded okay these proteins need to be properly folded now those proteins are going to enter into the endoplasmic reticulum in the endoplasmic reticulum there are these proteins called as chaperons okay, chaperons now what the chaperons will do chaperons will properly fold the proteins okay into alpha helix uh, configuration normally the proteins need to be proteins need to be folded in alpha configuration okay for example uh, let me show you here come back now for example if the protein is not properly folded, if it is beta pleated, like you know, if it is folded in beta pleated form, okay, there is something called as alpha helix form and beta helical, uh, beta pleated form. All your proteins, normally physiologically, all our proteins are folded in alpha helical form, okay, alpha helical form. That is something natural, but by mistake, if protein is folded in beta pleated form, means that's it. That protein is very bad protein that will not be destroyed. Okay. It's a misfolded protein. Do you want that misfolded protein in your body? No. We don't want that misfolded protein to your body. Now, what chaperons will do? Chaperons actually will try to fold. But if a protein is not repaired, if the protein is not properly folded, then this type of proteins need to be destroyed. Okay. See, here there is a protein. Okay, there is a protein. Now, with the chaperon molecules, the heat shock proteins, now they will try to fold. If they are not properly being folded, means now what will happen? Now, the chaperons will bring this protein, abnormal protein, into where? Into lysosomes. Into lysosomes. And lysosomes, once they take up this protein, what will happen? Now, that protein, see, that protein will be broken down into amino acids. Okay? And that amino acids will be utilized for the normal metabolism. Important MCQs which you should know here is. So, what is the receptor here? Actually, they will ask you LAMP 2A MCQ. Okay, MCQ. LAMP 2A is the one which is involved in, or direct question, LAMP 2A is involved in. This LAMP 2A is nothing but uh, a kind of receptor. Okay, chaperon molecule will come and bind with the LAMP 2A so that 
the misfolded protein will be taken into the lysosome. So, this LAM2A is involved in which type of autophagy? Macroautophagy, microautophagy, or chaperon mediated autophagy? In chaperon mediated. Heat shock proteins are involved in which type of autophagy? Chaperon mediated autophagy. Okay. Now, done. now after this, what we are discussing the four different types of autophagy. The last type of autophagy which I want you to know is mitophagy. M I T O P H A G Y. Mitophagy. In the name itself is there. Mito means specifically, specifically mitochondria. Okay, not all the other cell organelles. Specifically, mitochondria is being broken away. Okay, why? Because see, inner membrane of mitochondria. Okay, inner membrane of mitochondria have lots and lots of proteins. That proteins can be utilized by the body. Okay, during malnutrition or during starving conditions. Okay, let me show you how exactly the mitophagy will happen. Now, in your exam, okay, if someone comes to you and shows you something like this, see here, autophagy is happening. They are just directly saying you here, autophagy is happening, sir. Which type of autophagy? Macro autophagy, micro autophagy, chaperon mediated autophagy, or mitophagy? See, you can clearly see here, especially, specifically, only mitochondria are being destroyed. Now, you can ask me, sir, here even mitochondria are surrounded by, see, mitochondria are now being surrounded by something called as phago autophagosome. So, autophagosome is there means, where we have seen autophagosomal formation? Autophagosome is something seen with macro autophagy. Okay, don't forget, in macro autophagy, we have discussed autophagosome is formed. So, autophagosome, if it is there means, see, this mitophagy, actually, I should say, mit, uh, this mitophagy is actually a type of macro autophagy. The macro molecules like the mitochondria are being destroyed. Now, what else will come in your exam? What else will be asked in the exam? Okay, so pink and park. Pink and park. Actually, I should say pink and parkin. Okay, pink and parkin molecules, they are involved in which type of autophagy? Very, very important. Okay, especially if you are giving, like, you know, PG exams, this is important. Pink and parkin are involved in which type of autophagy? The mitophagy. Autophagosome is present in which type of autophagy? Macro autophagy as well as mitophagy. Okay, and this lamp, yeah, this one, La lamp. 2A is involved in which type of autophagy? It is chaperon mediated autophagy. Guys, is it clear? I hope you can understand. Guys, shall I continue? Is it clear, guys? The four different types of autophagy I have explained to you. Okay. Now, what else you should know? Regarding this autophagy for your exam. So, in yesterday's class, we have discussed apoptosis, right? What is the marker of apoptosis? The marker of apoptosis is annexin 5. Annexin 5 is the marker of apoptosis. In the same way, what is the marker of autophagy? The marker of autophagy is, is LC3. Okay. LC3 staining. So, LC3 is the marker just like annexin 5 in yesterday's class? The marker for apoptosis, the dye, the dye which we use for apoptosis, the marker which we use for apoptosis is annexin 5. In the same way, if you want to know which cells are undergoing autophagy, okay, which cells in which cells autophagy is happening, if you want to know, then you have to use the marker LC3, okay, LC3. And what else you should know? The gene involved, the gene involved, or the gene regulating, I should say. The gene regulating autophagy, okay, the gene which will give signal to the cell that now autophagy should have to happen. The gene is ATG, is ATG1. So, ATG1 is the gene, okay, involved, main important gene involved in autophagy. These two important things which you should know for your exam. Guys, now with this, we are done with the chapter of, uh, we, we are done with the topic of autophagy. Autophagy is done. Shall I go forward? Shall I continue guys? Okay. Now let's continue with the next topic 
the main topic of cellular adaptations okay the next topic is cellular adaptations in yesterday's class we are very clear whenever there is a stress on a cell whenever there is a stress on a cell usually cell will now undergo cellular adaptation it will try to undergo adaptation but when the stress is more what will happen cell will undergo irre uh, reversible cell injury later irreversible cell injury later at the end of the day cell death will happen now our topic is cellular adaptations how cells will adapt and what are the different types of cellular adaptation the first type of cellular adaptation is hypertrophy hypertrophy the classical example here is you know the person who is going to a gym okay a person who is doing exercise okay a person who is doing exercise now if i am continuously going to regularly going to gym and if i am doing exercise every day after a few days you can clearly notice that my muscles my biceps muscle or my myocytes they are increased in size so hypertrophy is nothing but increase in the cell Remember our size increase in cell size, sir. Increase in cell size, not the number. Now, for exam, what you should know? Okay, especially exam point of view, what you should know? Okay, this increase in cell size. Okay, cell size is increased because of increased carbohydrate concentration inside the cell, or because of increased lipid deposition in the cell, or is it because of increase the amount of protein synthesis inside the cell? It's because of increase in amount of increase in amount of protein synthesis. So protein synthesis is increased inside. So in, because of the increased amount of protein synthesis inside the cell, hypertrophy will happen. So what else will come in your exam? Okay, what else will come in your exam? So in during hypertrophy during hypertrophy protein synthesis is increasing so protein synthesis is increasing actually you, you should know something like this in your uh, cell there is a, something called as a nucleus inside the nucleus there is a dna now dna will undergo transcription the transcription will be followed by translation after translation you will have proteins so during hypertrophy there is increase in the amount of transcriptional factors increase Trans transcriptional factors inside the cell. So the transcriptional factors inside the cell are increased. Now, what are the transcriptional factors which you should know for your exam? The two important transcription transcriptional factors which you should never ever miss are eta 4 and NAT. Okay, so gata 4, it's a transcriptional factor. It helps in production of proteins. So, gata 4, very, very important. Guys, take the note. Gata 4 and NFAT. These are the transcriptional factors which are increased inside. Now, after this, what else you should know regarding the hypertrophy? Sir, in which organelles hypertrophy is happening? Okay, in which organelles hypertrophy is happening? See, in breast. Okay, in breast. During puberty and pregnancy. See, in breast, puberty is something like, you know, she is maturing. Okay, she is now somewhere around 14 years or 15 years. Now, there is development of breast, right? Okay, breast is increasing. Now, here, what happening? what is happening to this alveolar cells? Is it hypertrophy or hyperplasia? Very, very important. Repeatedly ask MCQ. See, during pregnancy and puberty, in breast, both, both hypertrophy is happening as well as hyperplasia. So, both hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia is happening. But important MCQ, out of this hypertrophy and hyperplasia, who is more dominant? The more dominant here is hyperplasia. More dominant is hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is more dominant, okay, when compared to hypertrophy. But right now, what we are discussing our topic is hypertrophy, where hypertrophy is more predominant than hyperplasia is uterus. Uterus in females, uterus is there, right? Okay, the one which carries the baby, the womb. So, uterus 
is going to increase in the size when during puberty okay during puberty when a female is maturing her her uterus size will increase as well as during the pregnancy so in pregnancy it have to carry a 5 kilo baby okay, along with the amniotic fluid so during puberty and pregnancy the uterus size increases the uterus size increases so what exactly is happening in the uterus hypertrophy of the myometrial cells or hyperplasia of the myometrial cells again it is both hypertrophy plus hyperplasia Okay, but important point here is the more predominant is hypertrophy, more predominant is hypertrophy, more. Now, after this, okay, what else you should do? So, the first type of cellular adaptation, when you put stress on yourself, like you know you are doing exercise, whenever you put stress on yourself, especially the muscle cells. Now they will increase in size. This increase in size is as hypertrophy. Okay. Now after this, let's talk about the separate second type of cellular adaptation that is hyperplasia. Now, what exactly do we mean by hyperplasia? Okay. Hyperplasia means increase in cell number. Increase in cell number. So the number of cells, okay, the number of cells in a particular organ is increased. So that is called as hyperplasia. Now here <coughs> hyperplasia is it means see the number of cells are increasing. The number of cells are increasing. Even in cancer, the number of cells will be increased, right? Okay. So this hyperplasia will lead to cancer. Yes, sometimes, not, not every time. See, actually, you can take this hyperplasia is a risk factor. Risk factor. Okay, you are putting a stress on the cell. You are putting a stress on a cell or a tissue so that it is undergoing division. The number of cells are dividing. So, this hyperplasia is actually a risk factor for cancer. In which conditions? Especially like endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial hyper. Plasia. Okay. Now, what exactly is endometrial hyperplasia? The endometrium is the lining inside the uterus, right? So this is the uterus. Now, inside the uterus, who is sitting? Inside the uterus, endometrium is sitting. Now, this endometrium, we all know, uh, during proliferative stage, it will grow, and during uh, uh, proliferation, proliferation will happen later in the secretory phase. It will become more uh, reddish. It will become more like you know, more blood supply will happen. At the end, at the twenty-eighth day, what will happen? All this endometrium will be shed out. So what I am saying is, in endometrial hyperplasia, what happens? This endometrium is undergoing more. The endometrial cells, the endometrial cells are dividing, dividing, dividing. It's becoming more and more bulkier. Now, why it is becoming more and more bulkier? Might be because of hyperestrogenic state. Hyperestrogenic state. E S T R O. Means in this female body, in this particular female body, now she is having excessive amount of estrogen. Okay, she is having excessive amount of estrogen. Now, this excessive amount of the estrogen is giving the stimulus. Okay, it is giving the stimulus for the endometrium. So, this endometrium is growing, growing, growing. There will be a stage that this endometrial hyperplasia can turn into cancer. That is uterine cancer. It will become endometrial cancer. Okay, so endometrial hyperplasia is a risk factor. But my question is, this hyperplasia, hyperplasia is reversible or irreversible? All the cellular adaptations which I am going to discuss right now. Okay, the cellular adaptations, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, mainly, okay, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, they are absolutely reversible, reversible, okay, so this hyperplasia is also reversible, okay, it's a reversible, okay, now, after this, the second important MCQ which I want you to know, I want you to know, is usually hyperplasia, I have explained to you, hyperplasia is something, a risk for cancer, okay, but there is one type of hyperplasia, which will not lead to cancer, which will not lead to cancer. So, that is called as benign prostatic hyperplasia. See, here also hyperplasia is happening. In whom? In men. 
See, in men there is something called as a prostate gland, right? Which will which will produce a prostatic secretions. Okay. So this hyperplasia is happening in the prostate, but here very clearly given, say it's a benign in nature. This hyperplasia will not turn into cancer. So that's why it's called as BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. So which type of hyperplasia does not lead to cancer? Benign prostatic hyperplasia does not produce any risk for the cancer. But endometrial hyperplasia, which is seen in those females who are having hyperestrogenic states, can turn into cancer. Okay. So hyperplasia is a risk factor. And hyperplasia is also reversible. Okay. Don't forget. Now, after this, the next type of cellular adaptation is atrophy. Okay. Now, what exactly is atrophy? Now, a tissue is decreasing in size or a particular organ is decreasing in size for example like atrophy of my muscles now if my muscle if it is decreasing in size if you look at my biceps if it is becoming decreasing in size this atrophy is because of decrease in the size of the myocytes or decrease in the number of the myocytes both atrophy and atrophy both there is decrease in the size of a cell size of a cell plus Decrease in the number. Okay. So, decrease in the size of a cell as well as the decrease in the number. Now, here MCQs, which I want you to know, is what are the examples of atrophy? For example, dis, uh, like you know, the disuse atrophy. Disuse atrophy. Very common thing, disuse atrophy. Now, the thymus, see. Remember, thymus, I have given you the example. The involution of thymus is an example of, the involution of thymus is an example of apoptosis. Apoptosis, physiological example of apoptosis. Okay, that's the best answer which you should go. Now here, disuse atrophy. What does I mean by disuse atrophy? I'm not using, not using a cell. For example, I'm not using my muscles. Imagine that I'm going on a bike. Uh, unfortunately, if I had, uh, any accident, road traffic accident. See what will happen? Definitely, that road traffic accident will cause, for example, uh, any damage to the spinal cord. If there is any damage to the spinal cord, the lower motor neurons are affected. Okay, if the lower motor neurons are affected, if the, if the lower motor neurons are affected, I cannot use my skeletal muscles. Okay, I cannot contract. If I cannot contract, then I'm having the flaccid paralysis, right? I'm having a flaccid paralysis. I'm not using any skeletal muscles. If I'm not using these muscles for a lot of time, what will happen? These muscles will undergo atrophy. Atrophy. This is disuse atrophy, or something like malnutrition. Okay, malnutrition atrophy. I am using, but I am not giving the proper nutrition to my muscles. I am not giving any proper nutrition to my muscles. So what will happen? The number of cells are decreasing, dying, right? Dying. Same thing. But we, we should have discussed that. Autophagy will happen the number of cells decreases the size of the cell decreases okay why the size of cell is decreasing all the proteins inside the cells are now being utilized autophagy is happening so the size of the cell decreases the number of cells will decrease so this is malnutrition atrophy, atrophy. and ischemic atrophy there is something called as i ischemic ischemic atrophy and denervation atrophy Denervation atrophy. Okay. Ischemic atrophy means I am not giving the proper blood supply. Okay. Because of some occlusion, not proper blood is going, the no proper blood is going, the nutrients are not going. So, automatically, organ will shrink in size. So, atrophy means shrink in size of an organ due to both decrease in size of the cell as well as the number of the cell. And what exactly is the denervation atrophy? Remember, especially this happens with the muscles all the time. See, this is the lower motor neuron which is all the time giving the trophic action to the trophic. It, it's giving trophic nutrition. Okay, all the time the lower motor neurons are continuously giving the trophic nutrition to the muscles. Okay, these lower motor neurons are the ones which, which, which causes the muscle contraction. Now, whenever because of some reason, if you take out this nerve, okay, if you take out this nerve, if you separate the nerve from the muscle, so it is a denervation, denervation. So, whenever there is a denervation, it's just simply like disuse, right? You are not using it. Your muscle, you, you, you cannot use that muscle. So, what will happen? This muscle will undergo atrophy. So, that's why we say in lower motor neuron lesions, in lower motor neuron lesion, the organ will undergo atrophy. But in upper motor neuron lesions, the atrophy of a particular organ is not going to be seen. 
in lower motor neuron lesions this is a lower motor neuron the lower motor neuron means the neuron which is coming to the skeletal muscle so in denervation at this trophic action is lost whenever this trophic action is lost the muscle will undergo atrophy not using that muscle proper nutrition is not coming to that muscle the trophic action is not there so the muscle will undergo atrophy okay so these are some examples which i want you to know now after atrophy next thing is metaplasia metaplasia so what exactly is this metaplasia is it a cellular adaptation absolutely cellular adaptation okay so metaplasia is change in one cell type one cell type is being converted into other cell type other type okay by stem cell programming very very important this is the this is the very important mcq which i want you to know it's the stem cell programming stem the mechanism mcq the stem cell programming so some program is changed so that one cell type okay one cell type is changed into other type of a cell for example one type of epithelial cell for example squamous epithelium is now being converted into columnar epithelium or ciliated columnar epithelium is being converted into the squamous epithelium okay something like that so change in one cell type to the other cell type due to stress is called as metaplasia okay here in metaplasia in, out of all the type of cell adaptations the most important cell, uh, cell adaptation which i want you to know is metaplasia and my question is this metaplasia is it reversible or not i have explained to you the cellular adaptation this is also reversible okay this is also reversible in nature very very important repeatedly ask mcq metaplasia is reversible or not absolutely reversible no doubt okay now the second mcq which will come in your exam is so which type of vitamin deficiency can lead to metaplastic changes very very important vitamin a vitamin a if you are having vitamin a deficiency that will cause metaplasia especially in your cornea okay so vitamin a deficiency will cause metaplasia next important mcqs what i want you to know is the examples of metaplasia the example can you tell me there are three important examples which i want you to know at least can you tell me one example guys can you tell me one example of metaplasia it is barrett's esophagus barrett's esophagus barrett's esophagus what exactly is happening so here the main problem to the patient is reflux disease reflux which reflux acid reflux the patient is having acid reflux now from my stomach imagine that i am a patient who is having acid reflux from my stomach acid is being regurgitated back into the esophagus now my stomach is having proper lining my stomach is having columnar epithelium okay columnar epithelium but in my esophagus there is squamous epithelium okay so squamous epithelium is not resistant to acidic damage first of all esophagus have never thought in its life it will never see the acid it thought that okay i am not going to see the acid but unfortunately because of your dietary habits eating spicy foods eating uh, eating foods in uh, like you know odd times will cause this acidic reflux so when acid is present in the stomach no problem why because stomach have proper lining proper mucosa is there columnar epithelium is there columnar epithelium is resistant to damage okay resistant to acid but when acid is coming back into the esophagus now this poor squamous epithelium now it is crying i cannot take this anymore i cannot take the acid damage something like that okay now what is happening in the acid reflux acid that is a ge or gastroesophageal reflux disease now acid is coming into esophagus now esophagus what type of epithelium is there very important in esophagus what type of epithelium is there in esophagus there is squamous epithelium is there simple squamous okay squamous, squamous epithelium now this is a stress right acid is coming and hitting the esophagus the acid is coming and hitting the esophagus for lots and lots of time okay it's not just like you know it happened it's happening one time it's continuous it's, it's a chronic process it is happening for the next one month two months three months six months what happens now the cells in the esophagus now they will they are like they will change the program the stem cells which are present in the esophagus they have changed the program stem cell programming is happening now in the esophagus squamous epithelium is not going to be produced now 
Now, instead of squamous epithelium, ulnar epithelium is going to be produced. Okay. Columnar epithelium is produced along with goblet cell. Okay. Goblet cell. So, columnar epithelium is produced along with the goblet cells. Here comes the MCQ. Which type of uh, like you know, columnar epithelium is being produced. Gastric columnar epithelium is being produced inside the esophagus. No, it's an intestinal type of columnar epithelium. Intestinal columnar epithelium is being produced inside the esophagus. So here the patient is having like you know squamous metaplasia. Okay, the patient is having the squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium is now being converted into intestinal columnar epithelium along with the goblet cells. So, if you take a biopsy from esophagus, okay, the patient is coming to you and he is saying, sir, I am suffering with this, um, this reflux disease and now whenever you do the endoscopy, okay, whenever you do the endoscopy, now you have seen some alteration is there, some abnormality you have found out in the esophagus, a very reddish esophagus you are, you are seeing. Now, you have taken a small biopsy, okay, you have taken a small biopsy and you are putting it under the slide and you are watching it, okay. Now, what you can see here, you can see the goblet cells, okay, the mucus producing goblet cells. So, now to prevent, okay, now to protect against this aesthetic damage, now mucus is located in the esophagus, okay. So, mucus producing goblet cells are seen inside the esophagus. Now, very important point from the patho point, uh, from the patho is, now mucus is stained with which dye? Can anyone tell me what is the uh, stain used to? Like uh, see the mucus. Anyone? What is the stain used to? What is the stain used to see the mucus? Anyone? It is, it starts with the letter A. Alcyon blue MCQ. So Alcyon blue is the stain. Like you know, if you do Alcyon blue staining, okay, you have taken the biopsy. If you do the Alcyon blue staining, you can see the like you know, mucus is being stained. Then you can say, oh my god. The patient is now having Barrett's esophagus. The squamous epithelium is being now changed into columnar epithelium. Columnar epithelium with the goblet cells. Now, from the medicine point of view, as well as patho, one important MCQ, whenever you have Barrett's esophagus, you are having a risk of, you are having a risk of what? See, this Barrett's esophagus, whenever you have, it's having a risk of esophageal cancer. Okay, it causes esophageal Cancer. Now there are two types of esophageal cancer: squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. Squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. Whenever you have this Barrett's esophagus, it will cause. Now tell me, guys, we are really good. If you are a, like you know really a good student, just think logically and tell me. Now Barrett Barrett's esophagus will cause squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma. Just think and tell. So, which type of esophageal cancer will be seen in Barrett's esophagus? Come on, Bruce. It is adeno. Adenocarcinoma. Now, you can ask me, sir, why adenocarcinoma? Why? Because see, go blood cell, glands, mucus producing glands. Okay, why? Because the squamous epithelium is now totally shifted to columnar epithelium along with the goblet cells. So, adenocarcinoma. Adeno means glands. Okay, adenocarcinoma is going to adenocarcinoma. Now, other important MCQ which I want you to know for your exams is, so, if I am having gastroesophageal reflux disease, I am going to have Barrett's esophagus. If you are not treating, then Bar Barrett's esophagus is going to turn into esophageal cancer. Which type of esophageal cancer? Adenocarcinoma. Now, where, in which part of the esophagus? Now, adenocarcinoma is going to be seen in which part of the esophagus? Very, very important. Adenocarcinoma is going to be seen in lower one third. Okay, lower one third. Adenocarcinoma, the most common site of this adenocarcinoma is the lower one third. Okay. But if someone, someone comes to you and asks you, what is the most common site of esophageal cancer? The most common esophageal cancer is squamous cell carcinoma, and the most common site is middle one third. Okay, the most common site of esophageal cancer, direct question, most common site of esophageal cancer is the middle one third, but the most common site of the adenocarcinoma in Barrett's esophagus is the lower one third, lower one third. Okay, now, so this is one example. The second example which I want you to know is, the second example of metaplasia is 
myositis ossificans okay myositis ossificans now what exactly is happening here in the name itself is okay imagine i am having uh, i am going on a road and i had some trauma okay i just fell down from my motor bike or car like what some, some something happened now because of that i am having trauma to my muscles okay so the trauma ultimately uh, just transformed into inflammation myositis inflammation of the muscles now sometimes do you know what will happen now in that inflamed muscles calcium will come and deposit calcium is now coming and depositing so ossification is happening calcium deposition leads to calcification something like a bone like growth is now happening inside the muscle okay so the muscle cells now are becoming okay the myocytes see myocytes because of the calcium accumulation now it is turning like a bone kind of cell okay bone kind of cell so here the myocytes are turning into like a bone like so one type of cell is now being converted into the other type of cell so myocytes ossificans seen in trauma is an example of metaplastic change but important mcq which i want you to know here is so what is the gene involved okay what is the gene involved with myocytes ossificans if you have mutation of the gene okay the gene is known as the usp gene okay yes it is usp6 gene this usp6 gene if you have the mutation of this usp6 gene you will develop myositis ossificans okay mcq usp6 gene mutation will cause myositis ossificans second example also completed now what is the third example which i want you to know see the third example here is seen in those fellows who are smokers okay now usually in lung what type of epithelium is there ciliated columnar epithelium is there okay so ciliated columnar epithelium is there something inside the lungs now in those smokers chronic smokers in chronic chronic smokers because of this like, continuous damage smoke is coming there macrophages are coming there you trying to take out that soot take out that uh, that the, the foreign uh, dust particles during that process continuously they are releasing the cytokines these cytokines are going to act on that columnar ciliated columnar epithelium so there is something continuous stress is there continuous damage is there so if you are a smoker what will what is the difference in your like respiratory tract and my respiratory tract is that your respiratory tract is continuously under stress so that your ciliated columnar epithelium now will turn into squamous epithelium famous simple simple squamous epithelium squamous epithelium means one type of epithelium the columnar epithelium the ciliated columnar epithelium is now being converted into squamous epithelium that's called as a smoker's lung okay in smoker's lung which type of metaplasia is seen squamous metaplasia is seen so squamous metaplasia is seen the columnar epithelium is converted into squamous epithelium all the cilia are lost so these three examples okay smoker's lung barrett's esophagus myositis ossificans are the three important examples which i want you to know regarding metaplasia okay now after this okay what i want you to know is dysplasia dysplasia the dysplasia is it a cellular adaptation no this is not a cellular adaptation no not a cellular adaptation okay, it is not a cellular adaptation cells are not adapting see now you are giving some stress to the cell either it will undergo hypertrophy hyperplasia or metaplasia or atrophy okay for example you are continuously continuously giving the stress 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 something now you for example i came to you and i am putting so much pressure on you i am putting so much stress on you see everyone will have some limit right okay if i am continuously stressing you there will be one point you are going to become mad on me even in the same way cells will also try to adapt according to the stress but there will be one time these cells will go crazy okay now that change is called as a dysplasia okay so this dysplasia okay it's irreversible irreversible and now cells like you know 
you cannot even recognize whether it's a like you know once the cell is undergoing dysplastic change you cannot recognize whether it's a myocardial cell whether it's a liver cell or whether it's a kidney cell you, can, you cannot differentiate so there is a loss of differentiation loss of loss of differentiation you cannot identify what exactly is the cell so there is stress stress now cell is now totally turning into dysplasia it's not an adaptation right it's not an adaptation Some, something have gone terribly wrong that cell was totally become crazy and you cannot lo, no longer find it out what exactly is the cell so this is not a cellular adaptation now cells are at the risk of absolutely turning into cancer why because this change is irreversible now cell is absolutely mad it will turn into cancer so dysplasia is a precancerous stage precancerous stage so if someone comes to you and asks you hypertrophy hyperplasia metaplasia atrophy dysplasia which of the following is a precancerous stage dysplasia which of the following is irreversible dysplasia in which type of um, like all of this like you know hypertrophy hyperplasia metaplasia dysplasia atrophy where you will see lots of differentiation of the cell same it is dysplasia you cannot identify what type of cell it is okay this is what i want you to know regarding dysplasia now after this let's start our next topic that is intracellular accumulations okay, intra cellular accumulation okay, intracellular accumulation okay now here the first thing which i want to discuss here regarding the pigments okay the first pigment which i am talking here is melanin Okay, melanin is a pigment which is accumulated in certain types of cells. Okay, in, we are discussing about the cellular injury. See, whenever there is any wear and tear, okay, whenever you are putting some stress on a cell, okay, when a cell is undergoing aging process or in certain pathological conditions, see, certain substances like lipids, okay, like calcium, iron, certain pigments like melanin will try to come and accumulate inside the cell. Now, my question is, especially in the exam point of view, See, this melanin is a pigment, right? Melanin is derived from which amino acid? Can you tell me? Melanin, especially from biochemistry, this is a question from biochemistry. Melanin is a pigment derived out of which amino acid? Can anyone? Anyone, guys? Tyrosine, Bruce. Bruce, it is tyrosine. Okay, tyrosine. Tyrosine amino acid will form. Okay, melanin. Yes, iconic, you are true. Now, second question which I want you to know is, see, this melanin, it is stained by, okay, it is stained by certain dyes. Okay, if you want to stain this melanin inside the cell, this is the cell, okay, in our skin cells are keratinocytes, right? Our skin cells are keratinocytes. Inside our keratinocytes, melanin is present. If you want to know whether a cell is having melanin or not, you have to put certain dyes. So, what is the stain or what is the dye to uh, see the melanin? Anyone? It start with the melanin, start with the letter M. Okay, melanin start with the letter M and stain also start with the letter M. It's Mason Fontana. Okay. Mason Fontana. Okay, Mason Fontana is the stain used to stain the melanin. Other important MCQ. So this is a normal stain, normal stain. But there is something called as the immunohistochemistry. Immuno. Important immunohistochemistry. It's also like a stain, nothing but, but it's something special where all the stain, uh, like, you know, where the slide looks like mostly brown in color, immunohistochemical stain, okay. This is also staining. Here, MCQ is, normally melanin is stained by Mason Fontana, no doubt. In immunohistochemical studies, to see the melanin, what is the stain used? Stain used, it is HMB, HMB45, HMB45 means human uh, melanoma okay okay hmb 45 okay melanoma melanin something like that right it's actually a marker of melanoma hmb 45 is used to know whether the person is suffering with melanoma skin cancer or not okay so two important points mason fontana is a normal stain okay normal staining procedure used to see the melanin second thing in immunohistochemistry the stain used for melanin or melanoma is hmb 45, HMB 45. Okay. Now, next. 
नेक्स्ट पिगमेंट इज हिमोसिडरिंग ओके हिमोसिडरिंग व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज हिमोसिडरिंग हिमोसिडरिंग इज आयरन अक्यूमुलेट ओके आयरन अक्यूमुलेशन इनसाइड से ओके आयरन अक्यूमुलेशन इनसाइड द सेल फॉर एग्जांपल इमेजिन आई एम द वन हु इज सफरिंग विद ए कंडीशन कॉल्ड एज हीमो क्रोमैटोसिस हीमो क्रोमा so see, this is a pathological condition where there is iron overload okay where there is iron overload now this iron is coming and accumulating inside now if you want to stain the iron overloaded cells you have to use a specific kind of stain now what is the stain used to look at this iron there are two important stains which i want you to know okay two important names which i want you to know so to stain the iron the uh, the stain used is anyone it start with the letter p it start with the letter p okay iron will look blue in color okay in a slide iron will look blue in color in the next class i will show you like you know all the image based questions will be discussed in one class okay now blue color stain iron will look blue in color can anyone tell me it will start with the letter p p r u s s i a n prussian blue so prussian blue is a stain used for iron okay iron or pearl stain okay pearl stain okay pearl stain p e r l pearl stain or prussian blue is used for staining iron and copper after this copper copper accumulation inside the cell okay now my question is in what is the disease where copper is being accumulated inside the cell copper is accumulating inside the cell copper accumulation inside the cell copper overloading inside the body what is the disease called as wilson's disease repeatedly ask him see you in your exam usually if i am the one who is suffering with wilson's disease just by looking at my eyes okay of course it is not a characteristic thing by looking at my eyes you can say okay this fellow is suffering with wilson disease now what is that ring which will be seen okay what is that ring which will be seen here in the eyes kaiser fleschner rings okay kf ring simply let's call it as kf ring just kf is enough kf ring okay kf rings okay you can have that uh, the copper will be deposited in the eye okay around the iris so that you can have a ring kaiser fleischer ring okay kaiser fleischer rings are seen in wilson's disease now other mcq especially from the patho point of view now okay this fellow is having copper deposition copper overloaded state in the body copper is being deposited in all the cells okay now why why the hell is this copper being accumulated in the central body because of some mutation some gene mutation what is the gene mutation the gene mutation is atp 7b okay atp 7b gene mutation atp 7b is the is mutated atp yeah hepatolenticular disease yes bruce yes it's a hepatolenticular disease now because of which gene mutation atp 7b gene mutation all this mess is happen okay now what else you should know let's come back to our topic our topic is like you know staining is staining all this intracellular accumulation of copper is being accumulated inside the cell now what is the stain used what is the stain used for this copper come on guys what is the stain used for copper what is the stain used for copper anyone it start with the letter r okay it is r u b a cubanic acid stain and roda nin ro da nin rhodanin stain not rhodamine it's rhodanin okay n i n e so rhodanin stain and rubanic acid stain rhodanin stain and rubanic acid stains are used for looking at copper accumulation inside the cell okay because and this wilson's disease uh, this hepatolenticular disease wilson's disease is because of atp 7 b gene mutation okay and last fellow See, if whenever you are eating like lots and lots of fat material, like you know, you are not doing anything, you are becoming lazy. You are eating like simply sitting and eating every day, Lay's chips, okay, burgers, sandwiches, all the cheesy items, pizzas. Now you become obese, and at the end you will be suffering with something called as a fatty liver disease. Okay, fatty liver disease. Now even this um, fatty accumulations can also go and accumulate in some other organs also. So what I am saying is, even lipids will start to accumulate inside your cells. okay so how come we see this lipids sir how come we stain this lipids so lipids are stained with mcq okay lipid accumulations are the same lipids 
are stained with lipids are stained with can anyone tell me repeatedly ask mcq lipids inside the cell are stained with the four important dyes okay, at least i want you to know three what are the dyes used to stain the lipids at least you have to tell oil red o oil red o is a stain oil red o sudan black b sudan black b and osmium tetroxide okay oil red uh, oil red o sudan black b and osmium tetroxide are the dyes which are used to see the lipid accumulation inside the cell okay and there are certain diseases called as the glycogen storage disorders glycogen is now being stored inside this glycogen now glycogen accumulation inside the cell in glycogen storage disorders now how to stain this glycogen how to stain this glycogen containing vacuoles the stain direct stain repeatedly ask mcq is pass stain the pass pass is the name of the stain which i want you to know okay so glycogen is stained with pass and last fellow which i want you to know is the calcium accumulation not the copper copper wala the copper wala thing is completed copper is done now last one is calcium okay that is a ca2 plus calcium will come and accumulate inside the cell now calcium is stained with anyone which start with the letter v okay van cosa okay so van cosa and algerian okay red so van cosa and algerian red are the stains which are used to stain the calcium stains which are used to see the calcium accumulations inside the cell okay usually with the van cosa i will see the calcium which appears black in color okay, i will show you don't worry in the later class i will show you that's a general pathology i will show you all the intracellular accumulation okay especially when i am discussing about the dystrophic calcification metastatic but as of now calcium is stained with van cosa glycogen is stained with uh, pass lipids are stained with sudan black b oil red o osmium tetroxide and copper is stained with uh, copper is stained with rubyanic acid and rhodanin is stained and in hemochromatosis are this iron is stained with a prussian blue or pearl stain okay so these are the intracellular accumulations which i want you to remember so in the next class we'll discuss okay in the next class we'll discuss dystrophic calcification and metastatic calcification as well as a topic of cellular aging and in the next class what i will be doing is i will take up all the mcqs i will take uh, 30 40 mcqs okay, which will be kept on coming asked in the previous exam so that the entire chapter of the cellular injury the entire chapter of the cellular injury will be especially discussed in the form of mcqs i will take something like what is the marker of stones apoptosis what is the marker of necrosis and uh, uh, for example something like a lamp 2 is involved in which type of autophagy okay rip kinases are used uh, uh, utilized in which type of cell death something like that okay and oil red o is used to stain so i will take 30 40 mcqs will wrap up all the cell injury will discuss all the cell injury especially in the form of questions okay multiple choice questions hope the session is helpful see you in the next session if you have any mcqs you kindly post it in the comment section I will try to, I will try my best to answer you. Okay guys, thank you. Goodbye.